Greetings shippers, welcome back. And yes, we're still talking about Marvel ships. Get excited, you know you are. Today we're discussing a ship that hasn't arisen out of actual canonical textual inferences, but instead out of behind the scenes extras. And by behind the scenes, we're talking about interviews, the press tour, and all of that good stuff. Specifically, extrapolations made by the actors who play these characters. It's the ship of Shuri and Peter Parker, sometimes known as Science Bros 2.0. Now this ship is on the rise both in the romantic and the BFF set. So let's take a look at it from both those angles and see how this ship is coming up so quickly when the two have yet to meet inside of the MCU, at least on screen. Before we get started, be sure to follow me on social media where we chat about all kinds of stuff. And I let you know where I'm going live, which not only happens every Tuesday at 9pm EST, but randomly. It's a thing that we're doing sometimes. We chat about fandom, there's salt, there's tea, there's all kinds of things. That's a good time. Now sit back, Relax and make sure you're up to date on your memes because it's time to talk about Shuri and Peter. The pairing slash friendship of Peter and Shuri is a relatively new one in the land of the MCU at the time of this recording. While Spider-Man was a staple and fix even before he was incorporated into the MCU proper in 2016, the same could not be said for Shuri, as she does not have the same prolonged history with the Avengers that Spider-Man does as a character. However, all of that changed in 2018 with the release of the highly anticipated and very well received Black Panther. While audiences took away a variety of things from that film, one of the best received aspects was King T'Challa's tech-savvy, inventive, meme-spouting sister, Shuri, a character who was relatively new to Marvel even in terms of comic verse, having made her first appearance in 2005. Following the film, interest in her soared, and with the lead-up to Avengers Infinity War, questions were flying as to how certain characters were going to be included in this massive crossover, and who was going to meet who, and which character did their actors want to interact. Amidst all of this, an interview was done by none other than one of the MCU spoiler machines himself, Tom Holland. Following not only Civil War, but the release of Spider-Man Homecoming in 2017, Holland had found himself a staple on the interview roster, especially as he was so eager to speak about on social media, and pretty much anywhere. This especially includes social media, and in general, he has taken very well to his persona and helping out with charity. As a result, it was no surprise that he was asked by EW Entertainment Weekly about one of the new fan favorites, Shuri, and his character, Peter, teaming up. To which he had this to say, I think Peter would love it. There's some great moments in the comics where Peter ends up there. Letitia and I have become really good friends over the last year and a bit. It would be brilliant to have our characters meet up. It would be so funny. She's brilliant in the movie. She's actually my favorite part of Black Panther. This for some fans was a call to action, and there were some who had already begun to draw this connection before any of Holland's statements, or the flurry of tweets that went back and forth between them in the months leading up to Infinity War, joking about Spidey's suit and tech, firming up for many the dynamic they felt their characters would share. And just like that, the fandom was off, in a flurry of crossovers and headcanons and shipping ideas that would eventually circle back to the actors themselves with moments such as this one. We met way before that. We met, um, I think we met last year at an interview magazine um, shoot when we got to chop it up together and re really meet within the Marvel type of environment. It was fun and we really clicked and I, I guess a lot of people really love that. So if it's meant to happen, it will happen. And I think that will be a, a really fun event. So just what is it about these two characters that has caused such an intense desire in many fans to see them together in some capacity? Well, there are many angles, so let's break them down. For one, some are drawn to the idea of them as Marvel's two smartest kids, and feel on those grounds alone, they need to team up. Others feel that they are both highly relatable characters in their own ways. While one is a superhero and the other an extremely inventive princess and potential Black Panther, they have many identifiable teen traits. Peter with his awkwardness, still finding himself in social situations. Shuri with her love of meme culture and online minutia. The two also exhibit a genuine enthusiasm and joy in their tasks that makes them refreshing from any to watch. And there is of course their mutual love of tech and inventive streaks. While Peter has not had as much of a chance to show off in that regard as of yet in the MCU, fans are quick to draw upon his comic characterization in that regard. And comic fans note that the times when the two have teamed up have been successful and productive, with the two operating as equals quite competently. People are also quick to take cues off of their real world dynamics as well, feeling that the playful banter and lighthearted ribbing would translate well to their characters, and that of course Shuri would give Peter a hard time, but in good fun, and that the MCU's Peter has proven he is very resilient and good natured when it comes to that sort of thing, and the two could team up very easily and wreak all kinds of rambunctious, technologically driven havoc together. Domestic Avengers prank AU, here we come. There are also those who appreciate the ship more than some others as the participants are age appropriate for each other, which is a concern for certain shippers. All of these similarities were drawn to the foreground for some, whether 
they are aware of the interviews in question or not, though that information galvanized and recruited many. While a smaller ship, it is well liked by those who are aware of it, and continues going forward despite Peter's tragic fate in Infinity War. As his most comic fans note, death is not the finite thing it is in our world in those pages, and hopefully not in these films. Also, more sleuth-like fans up to date on their backstage knowledge are much less concerned in that regard. And that is a decent amount of this pairing's fan base, as it has such an additional material-heavy focus. As such, there are many who are hopeful that they will still get to see this pairing at least interact on screen. And while there was but a short span of time between Black Panther and Infinity War, indeed there is still theater overlap between the two in many cases, the Fix-It Fix post-Infinity War are in full swing. Now of course, like all pairings, this one is not for everyone. There is much less objection to it on any front on the friendship side, especially as it is so small to the MCU fandom. Though there are of course those who feel that the two would just grade on each other, that they are too similar, and that things could very quickly get out of hand. However, romantically is another story. As always, there are those who are drawn to other ships, with Peter and Michelle having a decent following, and there are some who hopped on board the Shuri and Bucky train. Shuri XMJ is another burgeoning ship, and is often pitted directly against Shuri X Peter, and others who want Shuri to be alone, at least for now, reveling in her essentially single Disney princess status. As many fans debate whether or not the Marvel characters are princes and princesses in their own right, with actual royalty of course being given a bit more credence. However, there are some who oppose for a more unfortunate rationale. Bigotry is still alive and well in many circles, and there are some who still rankle at the idea of an interracial couple, and some who cannot even conceive of interracial romance due to their own subconscious conditioning. However, as mentioned, the ship is smaller, so all discourse around it is also at the moment fairly quiet. And this is a ship where the positive discussion vastly outweighs the negative, which makes it a delight for people who are interested to join in. However, the one downside, there is not as much content for it. Again, yet. How do you guys feel about this ship? Do you prefer it as a friendship or a romance? Why not both? How do you feel about my shirt? Is it too soon? Are you okay? Also, last but not least, have you ever found yourself drawn to a ship not because of the canon, but because of the extra material or some other kind of extrapolation that you could make? Let me know down below. And of course, if so, what was it? It wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't ask you way too many questions at the end. And to all of you guys who answer each and every single one of them and number them, not all heroes wear capes. Thank you very much. Sometimes it's fun to dive into these smaller ships. Rare pairs need love too, though of course I'm well aware there are pairings much more rare than this. Thank you so much for spending some time shipping with me today. If you have time, check out Patreon. It really does help a lot. And on the vote, that's where I put a lot of the more rare or obscure your ships and that way sometimes they get covered faster than others which is it's good I like seeing things get their shot. No matter what, I truly appreciate all of you taking some time out of your day to spend it with me and exploring fandom and of course Shuri and Peter. It's been fun and until next time let's get to the outro. Bye bye This has been Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to all of my patrons' names on the side. Let me know if there are any other headcanons, AUs, or just fun fandom stuff that you want me to cover. And of course, as always, stay tuned, for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.